video in this video what I'm going to do is I have this uh, 148 so it's a boost uh, Hope Pro 4 uh, rear hub and I want to change the bearings in it because I don't know how old they are and when I put it on my bike I want it to kind of have fresh bearings um, they are a little bit grainy it's not really something I can show on camera but when you do kind of turn the axle around there is quite a little uh, bit of resistance there and they're not really that smooth you can feel vibration through the axle from the bearings kind of crunching so yeah we're going to do that um, I will warn you it's not going to be a quick video I tend to do videos that are quite in depth um, it's on a used item so I don't really know what I'm going to uncover until I do it so yeah let's get started on that the only other thing in the video there's probably some banging in that because there's some workmen drilling and whatnot in the property uh, next door so it's going to be a bit loud maybe but yeah we're going to take the cap off what I'm going to use for this is actually a bearing puller tool which as you kind of tighten this bit here this bit opens up this is a 12 mil one um, sometimes they do just pull off like that but a lot of the time they're quite stubborn so if you just want to run that in there and tighten that a little bit and as you pull up it will kind of click into place and then you know it's gone into the groove and then you can just tighten it a little bit more and then you can just pull that off and that's on there like that so there's one of the end caps the silver ones always go on the free hub end so i'm just going to put that out of the way for now flip this wheel over and then we have uh, the same thing on the other side potentially just pull that one off um, if you didn't have a bearing puller you just need something to put in there maybe something like that and just hold on to the end cap and just kind of wiggle that back and forth so it's kind of hitting into the sides like so don't use anything sharp because you don't really want to damage inside the there and you just kind of pull up at the same time and that tends to work like i said they can be a bit of a nightmare but just persist with them um, next thing that we're going to do is remove the free hub which is very simple flip that over again there we go. so on these free hubs they just pull out you have this uh, what's called a labyrinth seal which is this green seal here so if you just grab that and kind of twist and pull towards you the whole thing will come out with the seal attached um, don't worry about bearings or anything falling out falling out they're all sealed bearings there will be some pores on here which are making a clicking noise um, and they actually tend to stay in the free hub but just be aware that they are small pieces and that they can fly out so just try not to yank it too hard just do it nice and soft so that if anything is going to fly out it's not going to fly across the room there we go so we've pulled up on that and you should have something that essentially looks like that with all the pores in place and the springs as well just check that you've got them so there's obviously four of them and in four springs and your little labyrinth seal so that's your free hub we're going to work on that later remove the bearings on there feel too bad they're very very loose so you can tell they're not like new or anything you could probably spin that quite quickly all oh, that one's a little bit grainy on the front so yeah we're gonna change those uh, there is a little magnet that is needed or like a little flat end something small to get into there because there is a, a one millimeter spacer and it's made of steel so it's a little bit of a bugger to get out that's why I like to use a magnet for them up losing the magnet in there as well so now i've got another magnet to get that magnet there we go so that's a little one millimeter washer don't lose that because if you try and put the free hub back in without that in place it's gonna hit into the hub so we're just gonna put that over out of the way and that's basically uh, ready for you to remove the bearings now from the wheel so that's what we're going to do there is a seal on the other side as well which if we zoom in a bit on here there is a little rubber seal um, it's just a weathering seal so i'm just going to grab another tool which is one of these little flat bladed tools because i don't really want to damage the rubber too much it is a metal one but the chances of getting it out with something plastic you'd need pretty strong plastic so we're just going to put that underneath and try and lean on that a little bit and then once you get underneath 
can see there's your uh, rubber seal. So in terms of like using tools, um, what you need is just something to raise the hub off of. Obviously what we want to do is we want to hit this shaft out of the hub. Um, so on the Hope Pro 4, you basically have to hit the free hub end and push it out of the disc mount end. So yeah, it goes that way. Um, obviously if you do this on something flat and you're trying to hit this out, that's just going to hit into there. It's not going to move and that's why you've got to raise the hub up. This is just an old hub support tool that I had. Um, whatever you can use, a bit of wood, maybe drill a hole in the wood that is the same diameter as that. Just so you can move it, it doesn't have to come all the way out now. It's just so when you hit it, you can move some of the axle. So that's going to go under there. Um, that's a little better that way. No. So we're going to pop that under there. And we're just going to put an end cap on here. Because we don't really want to hit the axle. Uh, yeah, the axle. We don't want to hit this and potentially damage it. I'd much rather put an end cap on there. And then if you mess up with a hammer, you're going to damage the end cap rather than the axle. And these are, I don't know. Six eight quid to repair, uh, to replace, so that's cool. You're just going to whack that. I use a nylon hammer for these kind of things because that means that the hammer will get dented uh, rather than the thing that you're working on. So, yeah, I'm just going to hold the hub there and just give that a little tap. Make sure your um, cap is on nicely. And there we go, that's very, very easy. Move that cap out of the way, and we're just going to move that and show you what we've got then. So what's going to happen is your bearing comes out on the shaft, and um, we'll get that off after. It's not really massively important right now to remove that. Yeah, so what we have now is the axle, and it's got the bearing on there, and it's a little bit difficult to remove it, but what we want to do is we want to remove it because we want to use this axle to get the remaining bearing out of the hub. Um, so ultimately, you could put this on the edge of a bench or something, just so the edge is sitting on that bearing. It doesn't matter if you damage this bearing. And then you could just tap the top of that. Like I said, I use a nylon hammer not to damage it. But whatever way you're gonna use, that's kind of up to you. Um, I do have the hub tool, so what I'm gonna do is just make this little tower up. So it's just various little tubes. <laughs> Just gonna lean that bearing on the side like so. We can try and work out how to use a camera. There we go. So that's actually falls in there. So what we do is we just slot it on the side and we'll just hold that on there. I'm just gonna tap it with a nylon hammer and because the bearing's on the edge it won't be able to go anywhere and hopefully the axle will drop through. Be careful your fingers. And that's come off and you're left with an axle that's not in shot there we go it's all the way over here and then the bearing doesn't feel too bad now but it did feel a little bit grainy in the hub could be that the hub kind of uh, amplifies amplifies uh, the vibrations through the metal so yeah what we're gonna do now is grab the wheel and we're gonna get that old bearing out of the hub that's on the free hub side Grab this, we're going to grab the little hub support as well, put that down. So yeah, then what we're going to do is slot this in this way, in the short way. So what's going to happen is this little lip is going to match up um, to the bearing that's already inside there. Just support the wheel so it don't fly off anywhere or move. Make sure the little end cap's on there. There we go, so what we have now is a hub that's totally empty. I'll show you that on the camera after. And then we have this one here, which as you can see is done the same as it was when it was on the other bit. So we're gonna do this again, just to tap that off. Right there. your axle there it's nice and clean it's kind of a simple system bearing butts up to there and there and then the free hub uh, slides onto there it's quite a lot of marks on this one I don't know what that is Might be black dots um, but yeah we're just going to show you the hub what that looks like on the inside and there you go that's what we've got it's just 
just an empty hub, basically. And if you want, just to clean all that up. Um, I'm just going to spray IPA and use a little cloth and get rid of some of the grease that's in there. And then we're going to go and do the free hub, uh, talk about bearings and whatnot and all that other stuff that you might want to skip. This is the 11 speed free hub, so this will do 9, 10 and 11 speed cassettes. Um, first thing I want to do is just remove this green seal. I just don't want it to be around when I'm hammering bearings out and stuff like that. So I'm just going to peel that over the top. And then we can remove that, it's called a labyrinth seal if you need to get a spare one of those. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to remove all the pores just because I don't want to lose them. So you can just pull them kind of upwards like that. And then we just move them to the side. Same thing if I'm going to start hammering bearings out. I don't really want little pieces that could fly out and disappear. And then there are little springs as well, which are like the return springs for the pores. And then you cut them out. Very easy. They're all the same, so it doesn't matter what order. You kind of put them back in. Just note from like, this is my left hand. And all the springs basically go on the left hand side. And all the pores go on the right hand side. Otherwise your pores will be backwards and you won't be able to pedal. So there we go, that's four pores and four little springs removed. And then inside here is just obviously a bearing there, a bearing there. And then there is a tube as well that sits inside, which is a little bit loose and it's meant to be loose so that you can have access to getting the bearings out. You can probably hear me moving it. Maybe not. There we go, that little click that was on my finger, it was the little tube and you can see on this, there's like a little lip on that edge there, where you've moved it over. So the idea is that you kind of move it to one side and then when you stick something behind the bearing, it's got a way of hitting on the back of the bearing. Um, so yeah, we're going to grab some of these tools. It's the same thing really, you just need to essentially have the free hub off of something. Um, I always recommend a bit of wood <laughs> with a hole drilled in it or something like that. Um, you could rest this edge of the free hub here. We had a block of wood but I don't know what I've done with it. But you could rest it on a block of wood and do it like that. Because the wood will ultimately get deformed rather than your free hub getting damaged. I'm just going to grab our hammer. This time, because we're hitting onto a tool, I'm going to use a two pound hammer. Yeah, the, the fact that the tube don't want to move over is a little bit concerning and I don't want to push it too hard with one of these tools because I'll end up like damaging the tube. So I've just got that on a lip a little bit. I'm just going to hold that there. Maybe zoom out if we can. There we go. So that's not the best of lips on there. check it from time to time see if that moved at all what you want to do is you want to work your way around uh, on the bearing if you push one side out more than the other it will just get wedged in there you have to tap it back in or you could end up damaging the free hub so just kind of do one of those actually it come out really easy I did not expect that to come out that easy uh, these bearings feel pretty good you got your blue grease and your little aluminium tube as well so that was interesting and that's what you've got in there. And then we just got to remove uh, this bearing. That also means that we've got quite a bit more space now. I just want to stand that up a bit. There we go. We've got quite a lot of space to get onto that bearing. So we're just going to make sure that's relatively straight. Just try and find a nice straight bit there. And like I said, I'm just going to that around 180 degrees tap this one and the opposite end and there we go that's it so we'll move that out of the way and then that's essentially what is inside uh, the hope 4 pro 4 free hub just a system like that these were the original bearings and these are the ones that i've bought 
Um, if you're not sure on the sizes of bearings, they normally say that rubber seal is not that great on there actually. So it normally tells you on the seal to some degree. Um, so this one's actually really good because it tells you the thickness. So it's actually a 17 by 30 by 7. So for some reason with bearings, they measure the inside diameter first. But what we can see on there is there's your 30. Got that there. So we're coming up with a 16.9. So that's your 17. And then the thickness is coming up at 6.97. So there's your 7 mil. So if you ever get stuck, you can kind of just use calipers to measure things and work it out from there. Um, sometimes they're not always that helpful, the covers. They don't always tell you. They might use like a bearing code on there. So let me get rid of that bit of metal. Here we go. So if you look at these ones, if we can focus. Here we go. They don't actually tell you uh, the diameters. They don't tell you the thickness, the inside diameter, the outside diameter. It just tells you uh, S6903RS, which you can kind of use that number, go on Google, and it will kind of tell you the size. But for some reason, a lot of the companies don't actually print that on there. So yeah, measuring them is a pretty good way to go. The other thing is if I look at some of these, uh, like this one, it's got a bit of information on the side there. So you can see it says ABEC5, and that is something to do with the ability of them to roll. So the higher the number, the better. And I think they start at 1, 3, 5, and then 7. Um, and Hope do recommend ABEC5 bearings for their hubs. Uh, this one's actually enduro bearing as well, so you can see that on there. So there is that. What I've ordered is stainless steel bearings. I just wanted something uh, that was good quality. I would say that these are better quality, the originals, because these are ABEC 5. Mine are ABEC 3. It's going in my own bike. Um, someone hasn't paid me to do this, so it's a bit different. It's my own stuff, but I'm, I'm okay to use ABEC 3. I've got ABEC 3 in uh, the wheels that I have on my... Kotic Soul 26 and yeah I've done 1,000, 1,500 miles with those things and they've been fine whatever you want to run is up to you as long as you've got the right sizes, right dimensions right thicknesses, the rest is something that you might want to choose, clean up the free hub and then we're going to install these bearings into the free hub with the tube which is probably um, one of the more tricky parts because if you press them in too far the tube doesn't move and then it can create problems when you try and put the through axle through there and stuff like that so yeah clean your stuff up get rid of the grease and then we'll go from there so yeah for this one bearing I'm just gonna put it in with what I would say is a bit of a more of a unconventional more makeshift way um, some people might want to use a socket and hammer a socket in there and I think that's not really what I want to do but if you want to do it that way that way it's fine I've got some old kind of presses and basically that fits into that hole and I found that this which I have no idea what it's for a different bearing will actually fit that way and what that will do is that will keep the this part nice and straight so that when we kind of tighten the bolt and compress the bearing in there this isn't able to move around a lot so it should go in nice and straight so just for this one bearing I'm going to use this kind of method we did kind of clean that up so it's in pretty decent condition. It's always good to clean stuff up just to check if there's any damage or cracks that the grease might be hiding. Um, so I will actually put a bit of grease around the bearing and it's just to protect this metal really from corrosion. It's not to actually grease it so it goes in there properly because um, I actually think that's not going to help because it's very small tolerance. I actually think that if you if you kind of thought, oh, well, let me put loads of grease on here, because that will make it slide into the free hub easier. Uh, I think most of this grease is just going to collect on top of this free hub as you push it down. It's just going to kind of wipe the grease out of the way. I'm purely doing it just to try and protect it from some corrosion. Chuck that on there, so you can see there's kind of probably even difficult to see there is any grease on there, but it, there is. I'm um, just going to drop that in there for now. on top, remove some of these, push that through there, grab, and you can see like if you didn't have, if you didn't have this piece that makes that nice and stable, what happens is if we were to use something like this, 
That means that when we're tightening things, it can pull. And what that's going to do is going to affect the top bit and how kind of flat that bearing is going to be pushed in. So if you can get something that will sit into here and try and keep that rod straight, um, that will be very, very good. So what I'm going to do is chuck some washers on there. Hopefully they're smaller than the end. Let me chuck this spacer on there. Let me chuck all this on there, really. Chuck some washers on there so we don't damage this area with the nut. <laughs> Probably looks kind of complicated right now, but. And then what we'll do is I'm just going to grab the spanner. So, yeah, for me, it'll be different for you. These are 13 mil. I'm just going to chuck that on there. You just want to keep an eye on this area here. Just make sure it's going in nice and flat. Obviously we can't push the bearing in further than this edge. So we might need to change tool, but just do it nice and slow. And you can kind of feel that bearing moving. And you can still kind of hear it moving as well. And then it gets to a point where basically that's pressing against the free hub and you don't want to tighten that because you could, you could basically warp the free hub at the end. So you just want to be a bit careful. to go in a bit more but this isn't this piece can't go in any further so we're just gonna switch it to a different one something that will sit on there nicely and I'm probably gonna use another one of these so yeah let's that and then we're gonna run that there and I'm just gonna load this up just so we don't have to screw the knot on too far quite a lot of thread left over. So, yeah. just, you can see because we've changed the tool there is a little bit of kind of float there but hopefully by using that kind of tool in the first place the bearing would have kind of been pushed in a little bit at a straight angle. I mean that looks, as I spin that, it looks kind of straight, this edge here. So that's cool. Just gonna grab 13s again. Let's see if we can tighten this. There we go. So just gonna pop that there. And it's moving very, very easily. Sometimes you might get a bit of resistance. noise you can hear like a that's the bearing kind of sliding inside the free hub and it's got to a point now where I've got to put quite a bit more effort so I'm just gonna leave it there we go and I don't really want to squeeze that anymore because you could damage the bearing it's difficult for me on camera to kind of convey how much presser pressure you need to use but you know you haven't got to wrench this up it's not a you know, 40 newton meters or something like that is, you only really need a little bit of pressure as long as that bearing is seated. And we do it by visual, so we'll have a little look at it. And this could just be me being a bit overly cautious, but, you know, these, ain't, these are not cheap parts, so you don't really want to damage them. And I don't really want you to damage your stuff. Thanks to me doing something incorrectly on the camera. That one seems quite happy. Might have. I need a little prod to get that out. Here we go. So yeah, I do it by a visual. So we grab a little flat end. You can kind of see that right here. If we can get our camera, there we go. Right here is the edge of the bearing, and right here is the edge of the free hub. And there's a little lip. It's probably like a tenth of a mil. If you want to do just check that all the way around really make sure it looks nice and straight but yeah I'm happy with that so it should kind of look like that you can kind of see from that bottom thread there you've got a few mil maybe three mil two and a half mil so as long as that's kind of like a, a uniform gap all the way around 
to me that looks good. Um, so we need our little tube as well. So weirdly this had a load of grease on it. Um, it's an aluminium tube that just kind of drops in there. I don't really see why you would have grease on this side. but I'm just going to chuck a little bit on. might just be to do with it interacting with this bit here. So that is something that I don't actually know for this one. So this bit's kind of important. Um, I'm just going to put a bit of grease on there for the corrosion. I need to move this out of the way so it doesn't focus on that. And get the free hub in shot. Okay. So I've just put a little bit of that blue grease on here just to deal with some of the corrosion. And then when we do this one, we're going to use a proper press tool. Um, there we go. Just put that there for now. And the thing is, if you do this too tight, then what's going to happen is this little tube in here won't be able to move and it might tighten it and it might be out of line. And then when you try and put your through axle through the back wheel, you might end up hitting into the bearing. So this bit's a little bit more tricky because you don't want to over press the bearing in. You don't want to press it in too far. But yeah, we're going to get the proper press tool with this. Yeah, so with the uh, proper press, you can get like a proper... Um, insert for there, so it means that the bearing can't float around anywhere. So it's always, you know, more likely that that will go in straight. And we're just going to run the same size on this other end here. So then that's nice, nice like that. So that's going to sit on there. I'm just going to grab that. Zoom out a bit. visual inspection before you do it and then what we're going to do is just going to tighten that and sometimes it can be a little bit stiff like that to begin with and then the bearing kind of seats into position so what I'm going to do I'm going to wait for this part of the bearing just in there that silver bit that you can see to disappear and then I'm just going to check to see how that fits like I said, I don't want to over tighten it because then you've got to knock the bearing out and redo the whole thing and then potentially you're going to damage that bearing, knocking it out. So I just want to have like a little visual inspection. So I would say actually that that's pretty good. So we can move the tube around inside. So that's a good thing. Um, it's a little bit looser than what it was. So I'm probably just going to tweak that up a tiny bit. Just the tiniest amount on there. Just to make sure we've got that seated nicely. It looks pretty good. It looks nice and flush with the back of the free hub. So we just spin that on there. And like I said, literally it's just going to be a tiny little tweak on there. Probably like, I don't know, you'd have to do that maybe a hundred times, fifty times to do one full rotation. It's a tiny little amount. And that's kind of what we're left with. We still move the little thing around. Yeah, I was worried then, you could hear it click. You want to put your little labyrinth seal back on so the flat end faces outwards and you've got this kind of recessed area. Sometimes they can be a bit tight, you just got to kind of work around it. So you put one bit under and then work around. They can be a bit of a nightmare to put on the hub as well. essentially is your free hub sorted um, in terms of the pores and that and all your little springs 
I'm going to do is just give them a quick blast with IPA spray, alcohol spray. Get some of the crud off of them. Well, I'll clean them off camera and then I'll just put one back on and then you'll know how to put all of them back on then. Yeah, just be aware with some of these um, like springs, they are made of steel. So I don't know if you can see on there, there's a tiny bit of kind of rust. So what I'm going to do is just use the nail on my finger and just kind of try and get rid of that rust. Just to make sure that they're nice and clean. I don't know if there's a worse one. Yeah, there's one here that has a rust patch on it. What side's better there? So yeah, right on the end, you can see it's quite dark. So yeah, just make sure you clean those up. You might as well do it while you're here, innit? So yeah, like I said, we're just going to do it on one of these. They all are the same. So once you know how to do one, you know how to do the rest. Um, in terms of the springs, there we go. If we can... So that's how they sit. So you want this longer edge to sit against the free hub at the bottom. So we're just going to take it and drop it in like that. I tend to put just a tiny bit of grease on that back edge. You don't want a lot of grease in your free hub because it could stop it from actually moving. Like with the paws and that, they might get stuck on the grease. So that's in there like so. And then for one of the paws here, I do the same. I just put a little bit of grease on the on this edge because this edge is connected to the metal and that's going to be moving like that. I've got way too much on my finger. But let's get rid of some of that. Then we're just going to all you've got to do is move the spring out of the way and then drop the pour in there. Oh, that's the max zoom on that one. There we go. So we just drop the pour on top of that little area. Like so. And then push the little spring out of the way as you push on the pour at the same time. And then that's that really. And there's your pour mechanism. So yeah, I'm going to do that to all four, and then we're going to get onto the uh, bearings for the wheel hub. So yeah, I've cleaned up uh, the hub in here, and on the other side, let's get rid of most of the grease that was sitting in there. Um, this bit's a little bit more tricky, because once you have the axle, say you have one bearing on here, and then you're going to thread the axle through, you've then got a shaft like that. So how are you going to press the bearing on? Because the press is going to hit into the shaft, even if you do it this way. So when it comes to this part, I guess it depends um, what kind of tools you have. I have a proper tool here, which is one of these, which is a Hope. Um, it says HTT182. So what that would allow me to do is press the bearing on. Um, so the bearing obviously is 7 mil thick. So that's allowing me to press the bearing on whatever side, it doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, I'll show you that anyway, what I mean. Um, what I'm going to do is try and make it easier for you. So I think it would be easier if we put the free hub side in first. I've done the same thing, just put a little bit of grease around them, just anti-corrosion. Got the right size press. Um, I'm going to stick the bearing on the other side. Other press obviously we don't want the bearing on the other side to go in yet because we have to put the axle in so it's just going to be the press by itself so it's uh, 17 by 30 and it gives you the kind of bearing numbers there I'm just going to run that under there and that slots in nicely and that'll keep everything nice and flat just grab the press or the thread of it anyway Tricky to show on camera. Once we've got this bit set up, just try and put that into there. There we go. Probably going to need a little hub support thing, just so I can get it in the sh in the shot. No, that's not going to fit. There we go. Tighten that down a little bit until it starts to protrude out the other end. There we go. So what we're going to do? Just bring it off the floor. Just gonna 
to slot that in. With this system, you can kind of, I wouldn't say tighten it like crazy, but you don't have to worry as much as the free hub because there's no tube in the middle that will be restricted. It's just an axle, so it's got to that point. Tighten that on. So it's kind of got to that point where it doesn't really want to go any further, so I'm not going to push it. Show you where that sits within the hub and you can get some sort of idea really how flush it needs to be or whatnot it sits nicely in there there is kind of a part of the hub that goes down at a little angle so it's almost like if you imagine the uh, bearings for a headset have that kind of 45 or 36 degree angle on them there is part of the hub that has that little angle on them there and it's just sitting below there and like all the other stuff you just basically have a little look, make sure it looks nice and straight. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah, so now that we've got the bearing in the other side, um, it becomes a little bit more tricky because the presses can't go over the axle. So we're going to drop the axle in. The long bit goes on the free hub side, and then you're left with the short end sticking out where your disc goes. So if we grab one of these, the 1730 6903 ones, you can see I can't press the bearing in. It's just going to sit on top of uh, the axle, so it's just going to sit on there, like so. It's not going to push down on the bearing, it's just going to push down on the axle. Uh, so what we've done, another bit of grease on the bearing, just for the corrosion protection. And we're just going to slot that on there. Now we have these hope tools. You don't need to buy the hope tools, but you will need something like this. So what they are essentially is 30mm diameter, so it's going to be, essentially they are a bearing. So... You know, could you use another bearing on top of here? But I think these are machined a little bit bigger so that they fit over the shaft, whereas this fits onto the shaft. So yeah, as long as you have something that's about 17mm internally and it has to be 30mm on diameter, so you have a short one that's going to sit on this end and then this long one, the thicker end, goes in first. And that's going to sit uh, on the free hub area, so on the free hub area of the shaft, and that's going to press on the bearing on the other side. And just actually pop that on there now and what we're going to do is take these and they will slot basically onto the top and that will stop um, basically the press moving about you might need a smaller one for the bottom I know that one's not too bad and we're just going to pop that through there you can just about get the handle one there should be enough thread on the other side set up just a little bit there we go there's quite a lot of stuff going on but that just means that you can bypass the axle and actually thread the bearing down just make sure that's nice and straight and there we go that's in the position that it wants to be in I'm just going to undo that that out of the way and I think what's happening is that that part there is kind of failing it's, it's coming into contact with the shaft so I'm just going to remove that and just run this straight onto there and just try and centralise that Same thing is happening on the bottom as well, where the little blue kind of spacer, yeah, is pushing on there. So that's why the bearing's not going in. It's crushing the axle a little bit there. This is the problem when you don't have the thing that slots in there. You don't really want this floating about because you push it in wonky. But it started straight, so it should be all right now. And there we go. And there's your bearing pushing in. Point where it's a little bit, you know, you don't want to turn it anymore. So let's get 
that out. Hopefully it's gone in nice and straight. in there. So let me get a little close up and show you how that looks. And here if you want to focus that. There we go. We've got a nice uh, smooth bearing in there. So that's cool. So now that we've got both bearings in, uh, what we're going to do, don't, don't forget to put your little rubber seal on there. And that just kind of presses into place like so. And that sits nice and flush with the edge of the hub. So that's all good. Um, we can take our little cap. I've already pre-greased that bit there. And then that's going to sit on there. And then what we're going to do is install the free hub on the other side. So we grab that free hub. But yeah, this is basically the power of editing because I had put this wheel back together and I forgot my one mil spacer. So yeah, don't forget to put a one mil spacer. I left it on a magnet on the shelf and kind of misplaced it. So there we go. And then you can put your free hub on with your labyrinth seal. Make sure the hole's nice and straight. We've got a little pore that fell out there. So I'm just going to grab that if I can and reinstall that. There we go. Maybe that one's a bit loose in there. No, so it's fine. And this is where having that tube inside uh, the free hub being nice and kind of not loose but able to move it if you needed to because if that was not aligned you would never get the shaft through there so I'm just going to turn that and that's in place and then you put your labyrinth seal on which is this green thing which can be a bit of a nightmare sometimes and one of the other pro fours I didn't have the I still don't have it the proper tool for it and I spent about 20 minutes squeezing it into the gap but this one's kind of not too bad, just this edge here. There we go. So that's cool, and that sits nice and flush. But there is a groove, so if you do have problems with it, there is like a little groove underneath. So if you can see that actually goes underneath the free hub, there's like a little groove for the seal to slot into. So sometimes you have to kind of try and lever that into there, and then the rest of it will follow. Like I said, just make sure it's nice and flush on there. Make sure nothing's rubbing. And then I always run a little bit of grease around these little rubber O-rings. Um, just makes it easier to get them off. And it's not going to fall off because once you've bolted it into your frame, the through axle is going to push down on there. So yeah, that should be all good now.